Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 356. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Magic Trick 353 to 356. Hey, for this one, you're going to have to download this one and this one, two workup expandable table for lookup. Now, here's the setup. We have a table here. This is where we store the data, but in a different workbook, we want to have this data appear. So if we add any new records or new columns, it should appear over here. And we want a two-way lookup to automatically update. So right now, if I select from data validation uh, P10, there's P10, and uh, day two. So P10, D2, the intersection is right there. So we have data validation. We have uh, a formula that's doing a two-way lookup index and match, and a whole table. All of those elements need to be dynamic. Now we're going to go back over to this table. Let's just see what I mean. If I create a new column here like this, whoops, control Z, like this. So we have a new column. If I come over here, you see how that's updated? If I come to the lookup column and select uh, day seven. Oh, look, this drop down even picked up that we actually added a new column. The uh, look up there value also picked that up. So that's the whole goal to this. Now, this is going to take a lot of steps. And if we come over here to this workbook, I have notes here. These are like the 11 steps, and each one's going to be complicated in their own right. 11 steps. Uh, the other thing is, I have this all scrunched up here. You'd never put this right here because if we have data expanding on here, here it would replace it. I just have it so we can see how it works on the video screen. All right, let's see how to do this. Now I've cleared everything out here, and I'm just going to start with a few, uh, the first few steps. Let's go over here. We want to get all this, so we're going to start a formula right here. I'm going to say equals if, and then I'm going to Alt Tab to get over to the workbook, and I'm going to click in this first cell right here. You can see right now it's got the whole workbook name. Notice workbook names are default uh, absolute. So I'm going to click right there and hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Now I'm going to type a com if uh, no, I'm going to say equals if that if that is equal to blank, comma, then blank. That way we can, uh, when we get down here and there's nothing in the other workbook, it'll uh, put a blank. Otherwise, and then I want that thing over there, Alt-Tab, and I'm going to click on that first cell. Notice it's got that absolute, so I hit F4, 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 close parentheses, and Control-Enter. Now I'm going to copy this down. Now obviously for this video, I'm... I'm uh, just doing this small range here, you might want to do it a lot uh, larger. Fill without formatting. Now you can't see that right there, but click on drag it all the way over here. It brought the yellow, but I'm going to hit my smart tag and say fill without formatting. So now it's got the data all the way from here. Now we need to count the number of rows. Even though we're going to be highlighting this column, we're counting rows. And then we need to highlight the first row to count how many columns of data there are. Now we're going to use offset names to do this, but there's a strange thing. Uh, this right here uh, may cause some problems. So I'm going to come down here and actually count the number of rows. Now I'm going to try and blow this up right here equals some product. And I'm going to put double negative, open parentheses. I'm going to highlight column A. Actually, could have just typed that in, A colon A. Uh, and then I'm going to use the symbol for not, less than, greater than, not blank, close parentheses, close parentheses. The double negative will con convert all the trues and falses to ones and zeros, and then some product will add them. Control Enter. Now I'm going to copy this over like this, and I'm just going to change this, uh, one, this B to 1 and this one to a B to one there also. And so that'll count the first row. So the ones that are not blank. And sure enough, we can verify that. We come down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, uh, we're going to need to use some data validation. We're also going to have to define, uh, um, you, uh, you create some names with offset for the data validation and for the match function inside of the index for the two-way lookup. And we're going to have to have the whole table defined with a name that is dynamic. So let's see how to do that. 
Now, before we do that, I'd like to actually change these formulas down here because guess what? For this column here, we're only going to need the POs, and for this one, we only need the days. We don't need that first one there, which is a field name for this. So I'm actually going to click right here, and I'm going to subtract one from each one of these, minus one tab, and then I'm going to hit F2, and I'm going to say minus 1. That'll make our formulas a little bit easier when we start creating dynamic uh, named ranges. All right, now we're going to need to do this column first. Control F3. Control F3. Actually, let me pull this up here. Control F3 is the way to get to define names. Oops, I already have them. Let me delete those. We're going to say new. Uh, the name for this one, I'm going to call it column, column A. And column A, remember, is going to be counting rows, because when we get to the two-way lookup, row, 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 column, column. So that's what we need to do. I'm going to name it column A, but it's going to be counting rows, or be used with row stuff. Equals offset, open parentheses. I'm going to start right here. Offset needs a starting point for a dynamic range. Comma, from that starting point, are we going to move up or down any rows? No, so I put a zero. Comma, from that starting point, do I need to move left or right for to adjust any columns? No, so I put a zero. Comma, and what do I want? How tall is this? The fourth argument is how tall. It's 15, so I click there. Comma, and finally, how wide is it? This range is only one wide. Close parentheses. Uh, click OK. And uh, uh, so let's test this. I'm going to click right here, and sure enough, you can see it got it right. Um, and then let's click New. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to call this First Row. First Row. And I'm going to come down here and do Equals Offset. Open parentheses. I need to start right here in B, uh, B1. Comma, I'm not going to go um, up or down any from that starting point. Comma, I'm not going to go left or right any from that starting column. Both those zeros means I'm going to stay in B1. That's the beginning of the range. And then how uh, wide is it? How many columns are there? I'm going to click on that number right there. Comma, and then how many rows wide is it? One. Close parentheses. Click OK. And then I'm going to test it by clicking right here. And sure enough, that did not work. It went down like that. I must have put the row where the column should have been and vice versa. That's why you always check it. So sure enough, that's exactly what I did. I'm going to cut that. Control X. Delete to get rid of that comma. Comma. So we want it one row tall. Control V. And that's how many um, columns wide we want it. I'm going to check this. Actually, watch this. I made a mistake there. In 2007, I didn't click Edit. So I'm going to have to click Close. It's going to ask me, do you want to save? I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to Control F3 to open it back up. Click on the first row, and let's click this to check. Sure enough, it got it right. Now let's do the whole table. New, and I'm going to call this Table. And we're going to go Equals Offset equals offset, open parentheses. The starting point is going to be inside the table. For the table, for the two-way lookup, we only want this stuff here. That and that only tell it, help us define what column and row it's going to be. So that's the starting point. From that starting point, comma, zero, comma, zero, comma, and how tall is it? How tall it is? It is exactly that tall. Comma, how wide is it? It's the number of columns. Close parentheses. Click OK. Boop. And now we're going to test it by clicking right here. And sure enough, it got that right. We could go ahead and test that. I'm pretty confident as soon as we add one here, everything will expand. If you were doing this for the first time, you'd want to test it right here. Click Close. OK, so now let's see if we can do our data validation. I'm going to click in this cell right here. All right, ready? Uh, let's see, like that. Here we go. Alt D L for data validation, tab, and then I want list, tab, and then I'm going to hit F3 to paste a name. And this one is, now I forgot where I am. This, um, I'm going to click cancel and move this one down. Oh, yeah, this is the row lookup. So we're actually looking at the rows, these ones here, so it's column A. F3 to paste a name, F3. Uh-oh, it's not letting me do that. F3. Okay, now I'm going to have to remember what the name is. Column A. 
click OK. We can always test it, and sure enough, it got it right all the way down to the bottom. So this is 17 when we uh, you know, add an extra row record from that other workbook. This better not be 17. The last one, it should say 18. Now let's do our column, Alt-D-L. Tab L for list, tab F3 to paste, and I'm going to do first row. Even though it's in the first row, that's what has the column headers. Click OK. I still get confused by that. So then there's our uh, column headers. Now our retrieval value, we're going to use index. Index, and this is going to be a pretty big formula here. We're going to use index and two matches equals index. What's, oops, if only I could spell index. It needs an array, and all it needs is a row number and column number. If you haven't used uh, index and you're trying to do this, you are brave. But index is, is real nice because we'll tell it this table, and it needs just needs the row number. So one, two, three, it needs a three for row number, and one, two, two for column number, and the intersection will tell it. And that's why all of those dynamic ranges will help us. Um, come over here, Alt-WG to zoom in. Actually, I can make it a little bit bigger. And then scroll over here like this. All right, equals index. And then we want that array, and we have a name for it. So I'll hit F3, and then click the table comma, and then the row number, we're going to have to use match. Match will look through a named range. And if we say match, take this and tell me the ordinal position, 5 is in what? 1, 2, 3. So the match function will return the number 3, which is exactly what the index needs. So we come over here, match. The lookup value is going to be this one right here comma, and then the lookup array, ah, that's our dynamic named range, F3, and we want column A. Comma, and the match type is going to be exact for zero, close parentheses. And then we're going to comma, match, oh, that's math, math, M-A-T, match. The lookup value is going to be the column, comma, and then we need a lookup array, so I hit F3, and that's going to be row, first row, comma, zero, close parentheses, close parentheses. Now this will work. Let's just try this. So right now, um, I don't know why my conditional, oh, I got it. My conditional formatted is working just fine. There it is, the intersection of those two, but let's try it. Let's test it. Let's change this to uh, 8 and this to uh, 5. So there we go, 8, 5, and there's 3,916. Thir uh, 3, did it get it? You betcha it did. Now here's the big test. Will it work when we go over and um, add data? So I'm going to Alt-Tab, Alt-Tab. That didn't work. I'm lost here. And let's add some extra, an extra row of data here. In fact, we'll just add two just to make it exciting. Uh, we can add one extra record here too, or add two extra. So I'm going to Alt-Tab. And let's see, did it pick it up? Um, I'm in the wrong one. This is not the right one. Alt-Tab. Oh, look at that. I saw it for a moment there. It picked up. So the actual formula, the if formula, picked up that, right? Um, let's see if our data validation picked it up. So when I come all the way down, sure enough, there's a 19. Let's see if it picked up on the uh, column. It's much better if I did this bigger. Sure enough, it picked up day 8. And let's see over here, did it pick up just in big, yeah, so it got, it got all of those. I'm going to pick, uh, well, let's pick this 19 and this, let's pick them all, 19, 8. And the retrieval value is 7,590, 7,590. So it looked like it worked. Ah, oh, that is just so cool. So that takes uh, many, many tricks we've seen here. Uh, and put them, slammed them all into one video so that we could have a dynamic table from a different workbook, uh, dynamic ranges for not only data validation but also for the match function, and then a two-way lookup with a dynamic table. Boom. We'll see you next trick.